Welcome to another edition of Maximum Growth Live. I am one of your hosts, Jay Ruane, CEO of FirmFlex, your social media marketing company for lawyers, as well as managing partner of Ruane Attorneys, your criminal defense and civil rights law firm in Connecticut. Joining me, as always, my friend down in the warmth, down in the sun, down in Del Boca Vista, that's Mr. Seth Price over there from Price Benowitz, your D.C., Maryland, Virginia, South Carolina, and Timbuktu law firm, as well as as the founder of Blue Shark Digital and speaker on all things SEO and local all over the world through the courtesy of technology, Seth Price. Seth, how are you doing this week, my friend? I'm doing really well. I am so excited for our guests. Yeah, uh, this, is know, the, yeah this, is, have, this is this is this is like Jim and Tyson have been so seminal and sort of you know just sort of our career tracks and you know the, the tribe they've put together. It's just remarkable from the from the Facebook from their podcast to the Facebook group to their conference. The first two were just uh, remarkable. Can't wait to hear about the third. Uh, you know, and now they they have the guild that they've rolled out, which is really, in my opinion, um, recapturing that that excitement of those early days of Max Law when it was sort of like you had to find it, um, and that it was a sort of uh, it took an extra set of effort to be there. Um, that uh, I can't wait to hear their thoughts on where things are and where things are going. Yeah, you know, it's really, it's really interesting to me um, to see how far this community has grown from when I joined it about two and a half years ago. Uh, I mean, I ha wasn't even part of the Facebook group when I was approached and asked to speak on a topic on the podcast. And then uh, I said, all right, well, I might as well join this Facebook group. And then it was like one of these things where it was like, once you're in, you're all in, and and the, those first couple of weeks, you're digesting everything, and it's and it's interesting to me because as the group has grown, you see people coming to it now, and uh, they're asking some of those questions that you you're know, like, oh, this has been asked a million times, but for them, it's brand new, and they and, and it's and it's amazing to see those relationships form, and. You know, over the last year, while everyone's been at home, it's been a very necessary outlet. Um, you know, the big group, but but more specifically the guild that you and I are both part of, that they've started uh, as a great, great forum for people to get together, work through their problems, uh, especially when, you know, practices were, were, were suffering uh, a year ago uh, with the onset of COVID. Uh, there was a lot of sort of, we'll get through this together. What can I do to help you? Uh, and, and that's really been the hallmark, I think, uh, of all of the um, all of the different programs that are out there for lawyers. Uh, a lot of them are focused on the finances and building and growing, but not as many are focused on just the interpersonal relationships that you get in the maximum lawyer community, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Uh, and look, uh, you know, Jim and Tice are both special people and they've been able to sort of create this culture that is not a sales first culture, but really a safe space, I think, to ask questions, experiment, throw ideas out and, and, and get feedback. So uh, I can't wait to, uh, to hear what they have to say today. Yeah, um, what I want to do is I don't want to. I'd rather spend more time with them than 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 time with you. I guess <laughs> uh, I, I'll just say it right out there. So, folks, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be back with Tyson Mutrix, Jim Hacking, the creators, the founders, the grand poobahs of Maximum Lawyer. Uh, we're gonna talk to them about the development of the the big group, about the guild, about what they plans they have in store for upcoming events this year. Uh, we're really excited about this. Um, it's been on our calendar for a while, and I got to tell you, it's probably the one that I've been looking most forward to. So, Seth, why don't we take a quick break now? We'll uh, hear from our sponsors. Maximum Lore Guild is, is one of them. Uh, and when we come back, we'll be with Tyson and Jim. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. We'll be right, folks, <laughs> right back, folks, with more Maximum Growth Live. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay Ruane, one of the founders of FirmFlex and a practicing attorney for over 20 years. Anyone who knows me knows how my firm runs on the systems we create and it has allowed us to flourish, even in tough times. I spent years and hundreds of thousands of dollars until I finally figured out a way to engage my audience and drive top of mind awareness with social media. And what did I do once I figured it all out? I built a system for it 
and now you can put that system to work for you. You see, we took the hard part, creating the content and finding the images and made it foolproof. Every day you will have curated social media topics to post designed to make your firm constantly remind your audience about your firm, what you do, and how you can help. And the best part? You don't even need to hire a dedicated social media person to do this for you. In fact, you don't even need to hire anyone new. We designed the system to make it easy for you to delegate to your receptionist, assistant, or paralegal and have them execute solid social media for you in just five minutes a day. It's like having a content writer, researcher, and graphics designer at a fraction of the price it would cost to hire in-house. Sign up today for the Social Super System and start building your brand where your clients already are on social media. In this world today, if you want to grow your business, you want to grow your firm, you want to take on more cases and make a bigger impact, you have to have a digital blueprint. Statistically, throughout the time that we've been working with Blue Shark Digital, our law firm, the Atlanta Divorce Law Group, grew over 1,400%. They truly understand where we're headed and how we want to get there. I have a team in Blue Shark Digital that I feel like has my back. We're thrilled to be here with Jim and Tyson, founders of Max Law, Max Law Con, and the Max Law Guild. Um, you know, guys, I have really enjoyed my experience with the guild, uh, the, the, the check-ins, the, the sort of thoughtfulness that uh, of getting things done during the week have, have really been very, very positive for myself. You know, Tyson, talk to us. What, tell us about the guild and what, what, uh, what is coming up with the guild. So what's interesting about the guild is it's, I mean, what's interesting about Maximum Lawyers, it's all sort of been building like building blocks piece by piece by piece and, you know, First, we started the podcast, and then we add on uh, the conference, and then we add on you know Max Law Media, and then we add then we add on other podcasts that like what like we're on right now. And then uh, last year, whenever the pandemic was going on, we, Jim and I had been before before March uh, of last year, we had been talking a while about creating something. I don't think we had called it the Guild yet. I don't actually remember Jim if we did, but uh, we we wanted to create a group that had less noise in it. Um, that was a, a group of people that were more like-minded um, that really just had really stepped up their game. And, and that's what's really interesting about the Guild. It's, it's a bunch of people that have, for the most part, made it. Not, not everybody, you know, but a lot of people have really um, uh, started to kill it in the, in the legal space. And they've got great firms. Like both of you are, are in the Guild. And there's a lot of people that are like you in the Guild that have really had a lot of success. And it's interesting because the it's almost like the original Facebook group was where it was smaller. You had people in it, but I, I, um, it's just it's honestly just a higher level uh, of people that are in the group that are really committed to success and and they really get it. They have that mentality that is that abund abundance mindset. They're not afraid to share something because someone might use the idea. You know, it's it's people willing to share ideas because they know it helps us all grow together. No, I've definitely, Jim, I, I've definitely seen this. And the idea is with those first years and months of the of the, of Max Law were really special. You felt like you had this community, you were in it together. And the guild seems to have recaptured that spirit where you were a victim of your own success. There are four or five, four or five thousand lawyers in the in the Facebook group, but that can become overwhelming, a lot of sort of outside noise. And the idea that you could work with a bunch of people to work on your business, taking in some ways the best elements of a mastermind while using the technology that we have during COVID where everybody's embracing Zoom. Talk to me sort of about like, you know, at least, at least from my perspective, you have re recaptured this, this, uh, this moment in time where people were sort of rowing the same direction together. I remember the, when we first started with the big group that Tyson and I had conversations about whether or not we should be marketing or talking to people who already get it or that we should be trying to convince people that don't get it. And to me, the people in the guild are the ones that get it. And the people that were in the group at the beginning understood. And I think now we're just seeing that sort of on, on hyperdrive. We're seeing people who are really doing some interesting things. It's become its own little laboratory where somebody said, I tried this and I tried that. 
And I think that that's one piece of it. The other piece I think is that we've always been a very supportive group. Like if there's any kind of dissension or people talking mean, we just kick them right out. Like we we don't waste a, a, a moment even thinking about that. And that that has resulted in a really healthy group. Um, but even with 5,000 people, it becomes unmanageable. So to be able to have those intimate conversations, I think people like being able to be in a closed environment where they know that things aren't being shared outside the group. But, you know, the, the footprints for success are the same for everybody. It's just a matter of where you are and where you want to go. Well, Jim, if you could get to sort of the, some of the granular, because a lot of a lot of people listening know about the guild, many don't. What what exactly goes into it? What what is uh why why would somebody want to join? Well, so we've been working on a product, our first product, and it's called Maximum Law Minimum Time, and we are actually recording those modules as we speak. We're releasing them slowly to the guild, but that um, is going to be our baseline for people. That's sort of a, a, a tool that allows people to figure out in six different categories of, of firm management where they are and which stage they're at. And and so there's right, we believe there's five stages altogether. We, we're just focusing on the first three stages. And we're, t we're all about trying to help people get from stage one to stage two or stage two to stage three. And the interesting thing that surprised me while we've been working on this is that um, you might be in stage one in say marketing and stage three when it comes to uh, practice management or to automation and or vice versa you might have people that are really really good at marketing and people that are need help on building out their system so the it's not it's not a one person is better than the other or one stage is better than the other it's really just about assessing where people are at and then really drilling down to try to find out where do they really want to go so a lot of people say they want to go to a different stage but there's a big difference between wanting to go to another stage and actually doing the right thing. So what we've done is we've tried to distill down into maximum law, minimum time, what we think each stage is, what are the, the, the benchmarks for each stage, what are the mistakes at each stage, how do you know how to get to the next stage, and then what the guild becomes then is our laboratory where we take these principles and put them into uh, the real world and, and work with people either on a hot seat or with our weekly accountability calls to really sort of help them get to where they want to go you know and one of the things that that i've liked is it, it's simple it is a very safe space it's not very expensive you've priced it you know i think for the market very very reasonably as you speak when you look at other options you have in, in for that tyson when you when you sort of are designing this you know what are the things that you think that like you know if you could have the ideal not the ideal candidate but a person come through is the idea that somebody is with this for a cycle or is this sort of a group that will stay together longer term what's your vision for it no this is definitely a more of a, a longer term group this isn't something where like with other programs you go through it you complete it because i mean that's just not how the world works like your firm doesn't work in a cycle you know like your 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 firm is always evolving and the, the reality is the principles that we that we distilled down today are not going to work in 10 years right they're going to be they're going to evolve a little bit like for like for example no one predicted a damn pandemic a year ago so things have changed quite a bit in the last year and no, that, the legal arena is going to change in the next 10 years and so that group what's what's great about the group is they're on top of things I mean, there's people like jay Ruane and seth price in this group that are constantly evolving right they're constantly changing their firm and, that, and that's the same thing with maximum law with minimum in minimum time the basic but I, I think the bedrock principles will be there but the way to get to some of these things will change and all of that is is really workshopped inside of the guild which is what's awesome about it jim one of the things one of the things that has surprised me is I've always known about myself that sometimes I might reach a certain stage and then I regress a little bit. I go back to doing too many uh, lawyer tasks, right? Go back to doing too many uh, things that I don't need to be doing. And one of the great things about seeing the uh, paths and the and the stages is that it lets you see where you are right now because you do sort of go up and down and you do, it, it is sometimes two steps forward or two steps forward, one step back, those kinds of things. I mean, for me, what I really like about what we've come up with is I remember very distinctly going to a John Fisher mastermind experience in Washington, DC. And I happened to sit next to my friend, Seth J price. And the next day we went over to his office and, and I learned about Seth that 
he had built this firm without practicing a lot of law. And I was like, man, that's what I want to do. And then I tell the story all the time. Then we went down to the basement and that's where I figured out where he had this whole call center. And, and I realized how far away my firm was from there. So what we've done is through, through these years of meeting with people and having these podcast guests and seeing all the things that are possible, all the things are possible and sort of getting rid of the stuff that's worthless and focusing on the things that are important. That to me is really what the, the guild and the new product is all about. Jay. Yeah. You know, one of the things that's really interesting to me about both the big group and the guild is that while I don't have a problem uh, jumping in, in the big group and offering some advice and that type of thing, and I'll, and I'll post and answer questions and I'll probably blow people up uh, and that type of thing. I'm a lot more vested in the success of the people in the guild that I can respond to. And I have found through various vision exercises that, you know, we've heard from a lot of people in this thing is, you know, you really have to sort of define your vision. And that's where my question is going next guys. But what I want to say is, is that I have found for me in the guild, I love working with those solos in the guild and giving them some advice and taking their calls when there is a money constraint. Um, you know, I don't like working with people who have a budget to say, okay, I'm going to go out and do this and I'll just write a check. Those people who are like, I have $500 this month. How can I maximize that? I love getting into the weeds on how we can do things so cheaply. And Seth will yell at me uh, and he'll be like, oh, just spend the money and be done with it. But I think it just comes from, you know, launching with nothing make and, and making nothing my first couple of years that I love working with people who have no money but have dreams drive uh, and have time and brains. Uh, and that's what I'm able to do in the guild because, you know, you really do have a wide variety of people at all different points in their careers. Um, and so you can really sort of latch on to them and, and sort of ride the wave with them, which is really a, a lot of fun. But my question then based on that is, um, what is the vision for the guild and for the maximum lawyer stuff in the future? Because you guys obviously brought something out that you tapped into an audience that was out there looking for, you know, the, the looking for a Sherpa, looking for a shepherd. And you have this audience of people that are even now, I mean, it's steamrolling in the big group. I mean, I saw uh, today there was a welcome and there was, you know, 40 or 50 new people just today joining the big group. Um, you know, where, what's your, your vision for how is this thing going to play out long term? Because I think, you know, the, the conferences and all this stuff play into that. But I'd like to hear from you guys. Where do you see Max Law in, in, in 2031? So, Jim, I'll start with this one um, and then I'll let you kind of go from there. I Because we've had a lot of discussions about this and this is we, we have a lot of ideas. But ultimately, and this is this is going to sound um, it's, all, it's almost going to sound like a cop out, but it's not. It's 100 percent true. and It's 100 percent accurate. And because we don't we don't treat the guild or the big group like customers, we don't treat those people like customers. But the reality is, is they kind of are in a way. Right. And they'll tell us what's next. Right. The, the guild members will tell us what's next. The big group will tell us what's next. So that I'll start with that, because how all of this has happened is, is that it's it's really been crowdsourced. Right. It, it's the, the group has told us what is going to be next and what's needed. And. When COVID happened last year, it accelerated what we were going to do with the guild and when we were going to launch it. So it told us what we were going to do and when we we're going to do it. Now, I do think that there's probably going to be some higher levels of the guild going forward. We've, we've thrown out a lot of ideas when it comes to, you know, are there, uh, do we have sort of tiers? Are there levels? Are there different silos? And, and all of that will, will come and, and, and the group will tell us if that's accurate and if that's what we should be doing. And right now, that's sort of what people in the guild are telling us. They want maybe different silos, silos, you know, different levels of the guild. And that may happen. And so, but it's going to happen based upon what our members want. Not, not because that's something Jim and I want to do. It's because what the members want, and then we'll add on and build from there. Jim? Watch this. Tyson, how much money have you taken out of Maximum Lawyer since we started it? And Zero much, dollars. Can you yeah, answer out loud for our audio guest? And how much money have I taken out of it? Zero dollars. Zero. That's right. And when was the last time you looked at the bank statement for Maximum Lawyer? About a month ago. <laughs> that's, 
That's a lot more recently than I have. I can't remember the last time. So it, this, this, this really isn't about money. And I bring that up, Jay, because I thought that you might actually ask us this question, that this question might come up sometime today. And I haven't really talked to Tyson about this, but for me, what I really enjoy more than anything else are the hot seat calls and the time that we spend with people when they're stuck. And I, we've had a couple people in the guild, um, Mark Lopez, Dan Schnurbush, that during that call, you can actually see something unlock. You can actually physically see it on their face. You can see the aha moment. And so what I'd like to do, me personally, inside the guild and inside Maximum Warrior in the future, is I'd like to do more of that just one-on-one -on -one coaching. I, 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 I'm thinking about that more, like I might want to get certified as a coach, but I really like the idea of, you know, finding people where they're at and helping them get where they are. And I think the other thing is for Tyson and I, you know, we bring different skill sets to the conversation. You know, I mean, for me, I like to spend a lot of my time thinking about marketing. Tyson spends a lot more time about operations. And I think that, and then I think yesterday we were talking to somebody in the guild and I think that that person really needs a counterpart. So just, just being able to see that trans, um, I was going to say transfiguration, I guess that'd be sacrilegious, but <laughs> that, that transformation that people go through uh, to me is really where I, where I get the, the fun out of Maximum Lawyer. That's awesome. Seth? You know, um, one of the things that, uh, you know, I think you sort of alluded to, and I'm curious to see, because it's something that I've seen both within the John Fisher group and others, that the idea of, you know, the value as things grow of getting down to the point where there can be verticals, whether based on just starting out, because the issues you have in that first year are very different than the issues beyond sort of a, a ramp up phase. And then contingency versus fee for service, major issues that are different there. And one of the things I'm personally excited about is as as you're able to do that right now as a catch all, I find it valuable because, look, I look at Jim as one of those grounding figures in the law. He's not he didn't sit there and say, hey, I got a valuable group and now I'm, I'm, I'm going to get every single dollar out of every member I can. He's somebody I look to that sort of like a, on a on a business level you know, brings me to a, a happy, to a happy place. And I think that's one of the biggest success pieces to the guild is like the fact that you guys have this report, just your Saturday morning call. When I listen to it, it's just, there's a rhythm to it that helps me from a business point of view, put things in perspective. You know, do you, do you foresee, because you can't be all things to all people that as this grows, having to put some more demarcations and strategy behind it? Yeah, I think that's a great question, Seth. And actually, that's a, a discussion that we've seen going on in the Guild this week, is that people, one person raised the issue, well, is it better for me to speak to people at my same level, or is it better to have, like, should we break it up so that there's people at different levels? And I, I generally come down on the, um, you know, everybody can learn from everybody, that there might be something really cool that somebody right out of law school or right opening their firm is doing or vice versa. There might be somebody who's been around for a long time who has things to teach. So I like that cross pollination. Um, and I hope that that continues, but I do think that there would be value eventually in as, as the guild grows, which it's going to grow of sort of segmenting by choice, people giving people the options of, you know, what do they want to focus on? Who do they want to talk to? Those kinds of things. You know, and something I missed that as it's evolved, you were having to be inclusive with West Coast. Um, the idea that there is a the morning concept to me was a very special one. It was as close as I get to doing yoga in the morning was was listening to the calls. And I, I found that that was uh, something that just and, and, and again, it's evolved because you were as you want to be more inclusive, certain things that the the feeling in the middle of the day when you sit down and talk is very different than if you're able to sort of map things out. Tyson, how, how have you dealt with sort of, I'll call it growing pains, like in a good way. Like these are like, if you weren't, then there'd, there'd be something wrong. But as you've seen the guild evolve, what are some of the challenges you've seen and where, how do you think you guys are going to tackle them? Yeah. Time zones is, is a tough one uh, because we do have people across the country. Actually, we have people across the world at this point. And it's, we had one member that was, um, and I, he was on the other side of the freaking world, you know, like, so you, you do have to take that in consideration. And so we, we did have to adjust the time. And, and honestly, I, 
I didn't want to personally have to change the time, but we also were missing out on half of our group that weren't able to attend these meetings unless they joined at 6 a.m. You know, so we had to, we had to listen to the group and we adjusted. And um, that was the really, honestly, time zones was probably one of the biggest, biggest things uh, that, that was a, sort of a growing pain. The other one is, is that we also are very conscious of the, of the of the fact that the group is growing and there there might be a cap to it, you know, or we may have to break it into smaller groups so you don't lose that field because what we don't want to happen is it become a 5,000 member group where no one knows each other, right? That's not what we want. That's not the point of the guild. And so we, we're conscious of that. That's, that's one of those things that we're constantly monitoring and trying to figure out how can we best serve our, our guild members. But um, so size is one of it. And then time zones is another one that they're honestly easy fixes. We can deal with it without a problem, but it's just something we have to keep an eye on. So let me, yeah, you talk about people getting to know each other and that's been a challenge this last year, but can we talk a little briefly? You've recently set the dates for max Lawcon. Uh, after a couple of other, other things. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you guys have in store? Because I know there's some guild events uh, at the beginning of it, and then there's the, the main event. Uh, so why don't you fill us in on that so our audience can know uh, what's coming down the line? Yeah, I'll let Tyson uh, say the dates here when I'm done because I'm pretty sure when they are, but I want to make sure. And we'll, uh, we'll be dropping the them in the comments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be on a... Tuesday and Wednesday in October, and uh, it's going to be sort of similar to prior conferences. It's going to be at the Ameristar Casino, though, so we have more space. It's a really, really nice space. Um, we're actually going to have breakout rooms this time, so we're going to have plenary sessions and breakout sessions, and the sessions are all going to be uh, covering the six topics or the six uh, spheres of, of running a law firm that it'll sort of track the... Um, maximum law minimum time and so we're excited about it um it's gonna and, that, and that's have the, the same guild, that's the first that's, is that the monday guild day or is that going to be the tuesday wednesday format that's not the conference itself the guild day is going to be for i think 30 members um it's just going to be a smaller uh, mastermind on that day before on that monday before awesome awesome no it just seems you, you guys it, again it, you put something special together you know from the very first uh, event and and headed to the uh, the Cardinals game and being in a party suite like there there's been a, a a esprit de corps that has pulled people together in a way that that is just really special and the fact that you've kept it going um, ha, ha, is is awesome. If you reflect back, did you ever think that when you started your your podcast that that, that you'd have five thousand roaring fans and a sub sub paid group within it? No, no, I didn't. And, you know, it's funny, Seth, you know, I remember when the first conference was over and not everything went well. Um, you know, we had technical problems. We started late. You know, it was there were about 80 of us at St. Louis University Law School. It was it was a lot of fun. Not one complaint, not one complaint about anything. We had our second conference again. We had about 180 people. No one complained. It's a totally growth mindset group. We're really lucky that way. And not everything went well for that one. I'm sure, you know, poor Mitch Jackson, every time we put him on stage, something bad happens. But um, <laughs> and, and the other thing is with the guild, with the guild, we've been going strong for a year now. We've only had, I think, three people leave the guild. So I think that we have captured something. I think we've gotten extremely lucky, um, but we've really found people who have that growth mindset. And I think that's what you not, you not unifies the four of us and unifies everybody in the big group and in the guild. You know, Tyson, when I reflect back on that conference and I remember each of those different clusters that happened to me, I saw that almost as a teachable moment because we each at our law firms have those things happen and sort of to watch a organization growing, it felt like it was in parallel track that if it was perfectly produced, there would be a price point that would change the whole dynamic of it and that that was part of the magic that you guys captured. Yeah, so here's what's interesting. So um, we had a, a meeting yesterday and, and one of the things that we were talking about, because we're, we're planning uh, for the conference and, and we're talking about speakers and everything else. And one of the key parts about the podcast and the, and the conference and everything else is that we put 
regular people, right? We take regular people that are really successful at one specific thing and then we put them on the stage and we have them talk about it. And I think really people appreciate that, right? Whenever we had the first conference, it's not like we had a bunch of big names. When we had the second conference. We didn't have a bunch of big names. We had a couple of big names that are known. We in had the Santa space, Claus. But, yeah, we, had, we did have <laughs> Santa Claus, maybe, our, maybe, our, maybe, maybe the most famous speaker we had. But otherwise, it was, it was not a, a group of people that we had, you know, we're not paying a bunch of money to bring in some big name, right? Like we're not, we're just not doing that because that's not the point of it. And so when we did have that the, the conference, the first one, when it was sort of, I wouldn't call it a cluster. It wasn't a cluster, but it was, it was not quite what we had envisioned. But you know what? The members didn't care. Like the people that came didn't care. They're like, hey, I'm learning. I'm getting a great, a bunch of great information. We're learning this together. It's great. And so when we were talking yesterday, I just, I sort of, you know, want to remind everyone like, Hey, remember what the, uh, the original thought was when it comes to the conference, you know, this isn't about big names. This is about, you know, people learning from each other. And that's, that's, doesn't matter if that's the podcast or if that's the guild or the conference, that's what it's about is just learning. We're all in this together and, and learning from each other. I think that, Jim. uh, I think that you're, you've tapped into something there, Tyson, is that we've, we've really made heroes out of a lot of the members in the group you know i mean that that putting people on stage and seeing how involved people get in the facebook group and now in the guild the people's personalities come through and i and i i uh, my wife and i bought a peloton it's coming in two weeks and we've been waiting since january for it um but if you think about peloton you know we feel like we know these people that are leading these classes we've never met them we we but they feel like they're our friends because we spend time with them every day and that's what i always thought about the podcast is that you know you you're inside people's heads through your their ears and they your true nature comes through and i think that's really what all of it is the conference the guild and the big group and the podcast is that we're just we're helping people connect and and now with connection being so hard it's just almost on steroids absolutely Jay, if I, final final questions. So, okay, so we know where Jim's passions lie with the potential to get into the hot seat stuff and really help people, you know, <clears throat> get over those hurdles and really make what they want. And sometimes that's just pulling it out of them, Jim. I think that's one of the talents that you have is is getting people to voice what's deep inside because when you get it out there, when you commit it to paper, that's when you can actually take actions towards that Tyson what's yours right uh, I mean you know we, we see what Jim really finds passion in uh, what you, what are you finding passion in in the max law community well I, I think Jim sort of mentioned it too is like I, I think it's awesome watching this trajectory of some of these members like our really early members I and I'm I we, we had in the first in the beta group of the guild it was we had a confidentiality agreement so you can't mention the people's names or anything but I do remember he was the very first person to be in the hot seat, right? And he was, he was, he broke down and was crying because he was talking about how he, he's not sure he can be able to pay his bills next month, right? And he sort of went all in and, and now he's killing it. I'm talking just crushing it. And it's cool. I, I can't tell you how many stories that Jim and I have seen just like that, right? And I'm not, and I'm, by the way, I'm not taking any credit for, that I'm just, it's a lot of the credit goes to the group as a whole, right? The entire group that helped get people through these really tough moments. And we've had a lot of tough conversations with people, you know, some people that maybe they shouldn't be running a firm, right? That's just, sometimes that's the reality. Maybe you, sh maybe you started your firm because you had to, and maybe you should be getting a job now. Like there's conversations we've had like that. And then there's other people that they should be running in a firm. They just need a little bit of guidance and just watching them go from that really just bedrock point to being where they are now is freaking awesome. I mean, I'll just throw out like a name. I, this person I can mention, Paul Yokobitis, that guy, it is amazing watching him start his firm a couple of years ago and now he's starting a new firm. I mean, it's, it's crazy just watching yeah. the trajectory of these people. It's, it's insane. Yeah, I watched his video this morning in the Guild. And I was like, I was like, wow! I'm going to follow along and watch this whole thing. Is he's he's growing intentionally in public for the people to take in and sort of, 
you know, it, it, it allows me to sort of think of if I want to grow a new vertical, I should be thinking about some of these considerations. And that's one of the wonderful things about having a community is that, you know, you can get on the phone with one of these people and say, hey, I want to know more about this that you're doing and how I can make it work for me. And, and everyone seems to, you know, really be um, really be interested in having everybody succeed, which you don't get in a lot of other programs, in a lot of other communities. Uh, you get a lot of, I'm holding everything in, uh, that type of thing. Whereas here, everyone seems to be a giver. And I think it's based on the model that, you know, Tyson, you and Jim uh, have put together. I mean, Jim, truly, you know, a, a man for others, as, as we have from our Jesuit background. Um, it's important to be able to, to give rather than take because when you give you get such so much more uh in return seth yeah and yeah one of the things that, that i would say that that's sort of like but wait there's more because not only is it a, is a great experience but something we haven't even talked about i don't want to belittle i want to make it seem like a negative but like the cost compared to the rest of the coaching market is so ridiculously low it's literally less than my cable bill with taxes and the idea that you are that that you have all of this community, but that you still have the resources to build and grow there. It's hire a person or invest in marketing that you that there you that again the bank account would be a lot larger if it was a different business model. But the fact that it is so ridiculously reasonable, and that by taking advantage of this crowdsourced um, you know uh, training that people can then go back and not be okay. Well, I now know what to do, but I don't have the resources. I spent it on on training that it really allows people to go back and then put those things in place uh, like Paul and others. I think you're right, Seth. And I think that's a great point. I'm glad that people find the value in it. You know, I want to change gears just a little bit and just mention one thing that has occurred to me after these four years of working on this thing. And that is, you know, you guys all have clients and you can see how different clients approach the same problem so differently. Like, I think part of our job as lawyers, that's the part of what makes our job as lawyers interesting is seeing how different people react and how human beings are and how they can be. And the one thing that I've noticed these last four years is that people really put caps on themselves, that people really artificially limit what they think they're capable of doing. And when you see people break through those caps, and I really do think it, I think that there, there literally is no limitation except the limits we put on ourselves of what you want to do. I, I honestly believe that. And we've seen it time and time again. So one of the, the other benefits for me is just seeing how far people can go. No, and then the fact that you're seeing that drives you to do more. You know, you say, hey, I saw your, your, your call center that inspired me. I went back and said, hey, I, I have an immigration shop and it's not firing. You know, it was an easy phone call to say, hey, what do you think about this, this and this? And sort of it is it is a yin yang. And that if you you know continue to to, to push and pull, you know, uh, our next set of uh, um Pro, uh, you know, programs on, on uh, Max Growth Live are going to be about outsourcing and want to be able to sort of like part of that has been to see what Tyson has been doing, which has been really creative and, and, and forward thinking about how has he been able to not leverage domestic labor in certain things that don't need to, what what has worked, what has not worked. Um, you know, those are the things that just, just energize me and seeing, you know, seeing people's successes. And as you're mentioning, you actually get to hear about either failures or wrong turns. I think you learn a lot from that as well. All right, so I got. Can I say something really quick? Just yeah, really quick absolutely. about yeah. the last thing you just said. I think what you just said is so profound. The the very last thing, because what's really interesting, even even with the big group, the big maximum lawyer group, and the small one, I think around the rest of the legal space, people are always putting up these walls, right, and making them. It seem like everything's perfect, right? But whenever you sort of break down those walls, you realize it's not perfect. Like no firm is perfect. No firm is killing like like you think. And what's great about what's special about Maximum Lawyer in general is that people are really, they're, they're willing to be vulnerable, right? They're really willing to step back and be vulnerable and be honest about their situation. So I, I think that that's what's really magical about the big group, the podcast, what Maximum, Maximum Group Live, uh, the, the Guild, all of that. It's just people are willing to, to pull back the curtain a little bit and be vulnerable, which I think is pretty special. I have, I have a, 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 a question, I think you know, maybe our listeners and our, and our viewers can get something from watching the explosive growth of the, of the big group. And now really the, the growth of the guild, 
there have got to be some parallels that you have gleaned from the growth of the, the, the this organic Facebook group that followed the podcast and then that you can translate into your own law firms. Is there anything from the growth, not necessarily of like what you've learned, somebody shared something in the forum, but the actual growth of the entity of Maximum Lawyer that you can say translated it to help you grow your own business? Because obviously at Max Growth Live, we're always thinking growing, growing our, our, our firms and growing our things. So what, what takeaways do you have from the growth of the Maximum Lawyer community that our viewers can, can understand and put into place for their own firm? Hell yes. So before I opened my firm, I, read, I happened to read two books. One was Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk, and the other was Tribes by Seth Godin. And Gary always talked about leading with value, giving content away, educating people, giving something of value before you ask for anything in return, and, and to do it consistently and constantly. Seth Godin talked about building a community of people who um, have you know similar ideas, similar goals. And so right alongside the Maximum Lawyer big Facebook group, I started an immigration group called Immigrant Home. And those two groups are always trying to pass each other in numbers of members. And they started wow. right around the same time. Right. So I have this Facebook group now with like 4,500 people in it. When I, when I get a bad Google review, I just hop over there and say, hey, everybody, somebody left me a bad Google review. Can you help me out? And they bury it in like eight hours. And, and, I, and I follow Gary Vee's advice by creating video content almost every day. You know, I'm up to 700 videos. So all the same messages that we use for the group, I've translated into our firm. Now, the interesting thing to me, Jay, is that now Tyson and I are in a spot on the business side of things where we're saying to ourselves, what lessons have we learned from running a law firm? And the lessons that we give to our law firm members, should we be applying to Maximum Lawyer? And that's why I think Maximum Lawyer is sort of growing up. So we're seeing it sort of in a symbiotic way, work both ways. That's no, it's cool funny you, you say that because I have the, obviously I have two, two different entities. And in some respects, you know, having started Blue Shark after Price Benowitz, there are many advantages once you've seen the mistakes you've made and you say, hey, where do I, you know, where, how can I avoid this type of issue as I build something new? Um, that to me has, has, has been uh, has been huge. And uh, things that we sit and law firms are more complicated. There's more issues, you know, dealing with the production of work and many of the employees you're going to have. But that the idea that, you know, I, I basically by using in the marketing sense, primarily a millennial group, which is much again, not easy to deal with, but much more um you know, t together in one sense, many of the things that you talked about with Gary V or Seth Godin or any of these great uh, scaling up Vern Harnish, many of the things, these best practices that are so hard to apply in a firm, I, I'm curious to see. And I think you will find as the Maximum Lawyer Media and as Max, Max Law expands that some of those things are almost easier outside of the confines of practicing law. And you're, it sort of felt almost unshackled to do that there. Tyson. Yeah, so I, I think I can distill down everything that Jim just said and, and what you just said too. And, and it's, they're the first two things I thought of before Jim said a word. Community, right? So having the raving fans, it, it comes down to community and leading with value. You have those two things and you'll crush no matter what you have, whether it's Max Law, whatever it's Ruane Law, whether it's you know Price Benowitz, whether it's Mutrix Firm Injury Lawyers, it doesn't matter what it is. If you lead with the value and you have a community, everything else will fall into place. Um, so then that's really what we've done. We didn't, we didn't make maximum law about us. Right. And then what's interesting, if you go on the Facebook group, people say, you know, what podcast, you know, who's Jim, who's Tyson. They don't, they don't even know who we are sometimes. Some of the people that are in the group, which is really interesting to us, right? Because there's so much value in the group. They're not there for us. They're there for the value. So I, I, I do find that interesting. And, and Jim, the examples that Jim gave, uh, we're, we're talking about community and it's about leading with value. He provided a, a community for his immigrant home people. And he was providing value and everything else fell into place. And so it really just comes down to those two things. Awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Jim, Jim, you get the last word. Jay, rather. Well, it's, it's Jay or Jim. You Jim. Jay to have the last Either one. I, 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 I didn't see you going. So it's, it's, all, it's all you. It's all you, Jim. Yeah. So um, I, 
I don't know. Just, just to recap, I mean, I think all of us are a work in progress. Everybody's somewhere in those stages, whether it's it's a, a podcast and a community, whether it's a law firm. I think we all have things to learn from each other. I think that the, the biggest threats to us are complacency and sitting on our laurels. And I think you always have to be moving forward. And so uh, I'm lucky in that I always have a a ser I'm searching for more information and more knowledge. My wife says I have 800 books that are all exactly the same, but to me, they're all a little bit different and they all have a little bit of a different slant on things. So you never know how something's going to hit you. You never know. You could listen to something that you recorded three years ago or that someone else gave you to listen to. It hits you differently where you're at. And so I think that the, that mindset of always keeping moving forward is the way to do it. Absolutely. I love well, that. Th Tyson and Jim, thank you so much, not just for being on here, but for your friendship. We are we are honored and proud to be part of Maximum Lawyer Media and cannot wait for Max LawCon uh, in, in the fall. This is going to be a, a great year and uh, can't wait to see what you guys do with the Guild. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I'm going to come out to St. Louis like a week early just to get out of my house. You know, so we're having my bed six feet from where I do all my work, I I'm over it, man. I need to do some traveling, and St. Louis sounds good to me. That's awesome. Deal. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Until we talk again, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for Thanks, being guys. with us. Folks, we'll be right back with more Maximum Growth Live. Well, Seth, I got to say, anytime I get to spend time with Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix is good time, even though it's not in person. Just getting to spend some time with them, about 40-so-something minutes, uh, has been great. Uh, what were your takes away from the, takeaways from the conversation there? Well, like to me, it was just, just that energy uh, bump. You know, it reminded me of, of, of sort of where we – came together and and sort of was a sort of a sentimental journey for myself thinking back to the journey we've been on together for everybody listening to this most people listening are you know at some point or another have used the larger group on facebook that max law has where people can get resources ask questions that that's really been developed um and i really you know i'm a big believer in what they're doing with the guild uh, I, I, I joke that like I was disappointed when they moved the morning call, but that was my morning of moment of Zen. You'd sit yeah. there, you'd think about what you needed to do next. And, and the idea that they have put together a group, which frankly, again, at a very cost effective rate to allow you a moment to think, reflect, and then bring these training pieces together. Um, you know, I think it's it really valuable. We've seen some junior attorneys really skyrocket out of it. And definitely speaking for myself, as somebody who has an established firm, I, I'm definitely using the, um, the, the, the platform as a way to help fine tune what we have. Yeah, you know, it's interesting to me because, you know, the, one of the cool things about the Guild is that you are getting people at, at various points along the spectrum. Uh, but what I have found is that as they are giving advice and as they are sort of crowdsourcing advice to people at different points along the journey, you can glean one or two good things from that that you're saying, man, you know, I used to do that 10 years ago and I got away from it and I don't know why I did. But I really got to get back to core fundamentals in certain areas. Um, and, of course, there's the, the question of technology that people are using. That's often in the big group. It's definitely talked about in the guild um, because it's just you can find solutions uh, that are out there um, and, and make your life easier. Uh, and you're not doing it alone. You know, you've got sort of, you know, 100, 150 other people in, in the same boat as you that can say, watch out for those rocks hey, it's going to get easier here. Don't worry about this, but definitely worry about that. And it just sort of takes some of that uh, pressure off of being uh, being alone and being the owner of a firm. That, you know, I think that's it. You know, um, you know, the, your family doesn't really get what's going on around you. Uh, you may or may not have a partner who, who, who gets it. 
Um, and that very often you, it is it is very lonely. And the idea that you do have a, a place to, uh, you know, to, as, a, as a test kitchen, as a sounding board, as a venting, whatever those things are that you may need. Uh, I just it's been a, a valuable experience. It's great. Look, just great to spend time with them. You know, it's, it brings a smile to my face. It's uh, we're all so busy and just just getting a time on the books for the four of us to spend 45 minutes uh, shows you just how crazy our world is right now in a good way. But uh, thankful we had the time to spend with them. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting, Seth. We've known each other now probably 15 years. And I've been part of the Max Law community now for about three and a half. And I can remember talking to you, you know, 12, 10, nine years ago at conferences, usually internet marketing conferences, not necessarily, you know, law related conferences, I, and I saying, we, we can't be the only two. There's got to be right. other people like us. Uh, and, That's and, exactly, and this was, and th and this was found the people that were as crazy, geeked out, however, whatever you want to call it, about passionate about what they're doing with their with their business. Uh, that it just, uh, you know, you're right. We sat there saying, "Where is everybody else?" And it took it took Jim and Tyson to help us find them. Yeah, and you know the the really cool thing about it is that um, in this community of people, uh, there are so many people with certain passions. Like for you, it, it's it's digital first. It's SEO. It's doing SEO the right way. With me, I, I, I'm the systems guy. I love building systems. Uh, I think, you know, I like to, to, to think through the logic steps of all the different permutations so that we can have a system that encompasses everything. And that's really become my thing. And I think combined, there's people that fit everything. You know, there are people who are big into, uh, you know, f document generation and, and automating everything with document generation so that they can have people buy it from them online. And there are people who are all about vision. Uh, and there's really about everything. Um, and it inspired me even to, to, to create a Facebook group um, all about systemizing your law firm. Uh, and that's starting to grow as people start to join it. And, and we could talk just about the thing that I find passion in, which is is creating systems. I have an opportunity to, to bid on a state contract here in Connecticut. Uh, and, and the thing that excites me most about it uh, is it's a whole new way I can build systems. I was going to say, any, any excuse, you, you're like, yeah, I may not make money, but I get to build more systems, so I'm, I'm in. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's that's basically what I, I said. I said, you know, the, the state contract, you know, it, 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 it's a, I'm not going to say it's not real money, but, you know, you have to spend it on lawyers and on staff and, and on postage no, 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 and all no, that but, stuff. But it's, it's a, what my guess is the state contract, it has tighter margins. The only way you can make money is if you really systematize it. Right, uh, and I'm and so excited. That's, that's I'm awesome. sitting around thinking, I'm, I'm salivating, well, I could do this, and we could have these people do this, and uh, and, and I could do that. I, I'm just, I'm getting excited over the systems more than about the uh, actual yeah, yeah, income yeah. or anything. That's just me. I'm no, a dork. It, what can I say? It's, awesome. it's, it's, well, I, I'm a systems I, I, dork. I, I, love, I love today, and it just reminded me how excited I am for Max Law Con 3. So uh, yeah. let's, uh, you know, ha have an awesome week. And the one thing that I'm excited about going forward is you're talking about systems is I want to, I want to sort of dive deep over these next few weeks into the outsourcing and figuring out oh, yeah. how we can bring value to all of our listeners, present company included, but how do we, how do we best, uh, how do we find best practices what, and see if we can get people to share with us what's worked, what hasn't worked to cut down the learning curve for people? Yeah, it's been a learning curve for me because, as you know, I'm in the process of doing it. We've got we actually have two very solid. One is a rock star, uh, two very solid uh, VAs now working for us that we got. But we've bombed through eight others. You know, it, it, it has right. not so been we, easy. So and, right. And we're at the very beginning. We have two. We, we You know, look, the marketing team has an entire operation overseas, and I have a personal VA in, in, in the Philippines doing little tasks. That's not what I'm talking about. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you, if you are a systems guy like Jay, you'll find the things to plug in. But I am now thinking about how are you able to, what tasks don't need to be done by somebody sitting here? As we say with COVID, you don't have to be next door. We have a woman who is US college educated living in Latin America. Like you're, you're now, the geographic boundaries are breaking down and we're able to get the best talent wherever it may be on the on the planet. So really excited to sort of dive deep over into that over the coming weeks. I'm loving it. Okay, folks, so that's going to do it for this week's edition of Maximum Growth Live. 
I am Jay Ruane, CEO of FirmFlex. He is Seth Price of Blue Shark Digital. Always here to answer your questions. If you have anything that we can help you with, please don't hesitate to reach out. Also, be sure to join my Facebook group, Systemizing Your Law Firm for Growth, uh, because we want to encourage people to, in, to develop and implement systems that can really make you sort of succeed and take a lot of the pressures off your plate. Uh, of course, down below, you can leave us any messages that you want, uh, and be sure to tune in every Tuesday and Thursday for our live shows here on Facebook. As well as that, you can always catch the podcast edition of this syndicated through the Maximum Lawyer podcast uh, or our standalone Maximum Growth Live podcast available wherever podcasts are sold. Are they even sold anymore? Are there paid podcasts? There's got to be a paid podcast, right? I, I, I don't know of any, but... I mean, you there's know, paid TV I, I and free TV. I remember Artie Lang had one for a while, but I don't think it lasted. Yeah, I'm just curious. It's something I should. I'm gonna. I'm gonna yeah. investigate that, folks, and find out. Are there paid okay. podcasts out there? So there you go, Seth. Anything else you got to add? Yeah, that's it. Have a great All week. Right. Have a great week, folks. We'll see you next week on another edition of Maximum Growth Live. Bye for now.